So when we export this Mogurt, what we want everyone to be able to change is player dropdown, stats, and colors. We're gonna be talking about the Essential Graphics panel today and different ways that you can leverage its capabilities. A lot of people think of this as like a Mogurt generator, which it is, but there's also other benefits of using the Essential Graphics panel, primarily to daisy chain elements from one pre-comp to another. And I'm gonna show you how to do that by using the stats graphic tutorial series that we created. We're gonna tie a couple things together. We need the stats, we need the colors, and I'm also gonna use the dropdown. So at the end, what we really want is to run everything from this Essential Graphics panel so that when we, when we export it as a Mogurt, anyone can use this within Premiere. So let's hop in and take a look at how we can make that happen. I'm in my main comp here that everything rolls into. I'm gonna go up here to Window, Essential Graphics, and let's open this up. So there's a couple of things with the Essential Graphics panel. A lot of people recognize the Essential Graphics panel as having the ability to create or export a Mogurt that you can then use in Premiere Pro. There are other benefits to the Essential Graphics panel, however, that we'll get to. So we are in the Stats Graphic Tutorial Series. So let's go for an easy win here. The player dropdown is the first thing that we're going to add. So if I hit E while on my controller here, and I go to drop down menu, I can click this menu and drag it up here. And now we can control, if I go to a different area here, yeah, this has both name and her, her face. So let's change it to somebody else. All right, so that's all set up. And one key thing that I do wanna point out is that anything we do to drop any contents into the Essential Graphics panel, it needs to come from the timeline. You can't drag something from the project into the Essential Graphics panel. It will not work. You need to click and drag from the timeline. So the other things that we need to do are the color and the stats. So let's work through each of these boards one by one. And I wanna show you how we can make some adjustments within the comps and use the essential graphics panel between the comps more as like a conduit than an end result. So I have actually gone in and upgraded to a little bit more of a dynamic basketball here in my comp. The only issue is that I had to create that as a pre-comp. So if I were to adjust my colors, if I adjust my pink, nothing happens. So let's hop into the dynamic animated ball here. And I've gone ahead and rigged everything up here already. So if I'm in here and I change this pink color, it will update. So everything is rigged up to this controller point, but we need to get this controller somehow over to board one and connected to board one controller so that when I change the color at large in this board, it will also change. So we're basically daisy chaining things together here. So let's go down and open up every single one of these colors because again, we need to drag and drop from the timeline. And I almost did something that you shouldn't do, which is another gotcha. When you're daisy chaining things together, you wanna make sure that your primary here is set to the correct comp name. So I need to make sure that for my dynamic animated ball, that I am on the correct comp up here. So everything disappears and it's basically a clear comp that then I can drag all my colors into. It's gonna take the name here from the effect and we're all set. Now, if I were to click on this pink and change it and click okay, it works here too. So I know that we're good to go. So now what I want to do is go back into board one and you'll see that instead of just having transform here, I now have essential properties added down below with the four things that we included in our central graphic panel for the dynamic animated ball. So now that we're in board one, if I hit E on my controller, 
and open these ones up, I can go ahead and pick whip to match all my different colors. So now if I'm in my controller and I change the pink to a different color, it's connected. So I don't have to worry about this anymore, but it's doing the work through the essential properties that gets added after I've already been in the essential graphics panel for a given comp and added certain elements that were accepted into the essential graphics panel. So now I don't need this anymore. I can close it out. And in board one, let's make sure that we're in board one. We get a clean slate here because I want to do the exact same thing for them to appear here in board one. See how it's just transform. I want those essential properties to appear here so that I can then tie them to my overall controller and run everything into the single channel that then I'm just changing once. So let's go ahead and set that up in board one, the exact same way we set it up in the ball comp. Okay, now that we have that, when we go back to our main comp, essential properties appears. And we can tie it all together here. All right, so now we just need to do this for every other comp that we have. Make sure that everything that we have on our controller is linked and we need to make sure we go to Artboard 2 because we're in the Artboard 2 comp. We have all the colors. See, if I try and drag from here, it's not gonna let me. You have to open up and drag from the timeline. And it's good to check your work here and make sure that things are going to change here for you. So we're good there. Good there. Good there. All right. Well, I'm going to let you tackle artboard three and four, and then we're going to get to the text. All right. So then that gets us to the stats text. So I'm actually not going to daisy chain this all the way back. I'm just going to pull it from, pull it in from my main comp. So if I go to my main comp, I have Asia Wilson's name here with my drop down menu control that's controlling the player's name and image. And I can actually drop into the essential graphics from any pre comp. In order to drop text within the essential graphic, you need to drop the source text. And it's going to drop points. And let's drop source text for. We can rename these two. So let's call this points number. Or we can call this stat one. And this is stat one number. I like renaming them a little bit because you never know what will be changed. This could change to a different stat. So it, it's helpful to just name them generically for whoever is at the end. They don't think that it's a guaranteed or something that they can't adjust themselves. And let's drop this last one in. Source text, call this that three number. Great. And you could drag and drop again from, from any, any comp here. So now we're good with the stats text. And now when we go back to our main comp, we, we do still need to tie a couple of these things together. So we can see for Artboard 4, none of this is tied together. So if we wanted to change the colors, it wouldn't follow along. So make sure you go back and tie it all together here at the very front. Make sure everything is working. All right. We had Artboard 3 to do as well. I'm just pick whipping directly to them. 
cut down on some steps. All right, so now I want to add these colors to my comp. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So let's save it. That was a lot of work. Now we got to test this thing out. If I go to a space here where I can see most of this, I want to see a player image and the names and all three color, all three, at least the three primary colors here. So if I go ahead and change them, let's do something absolutely gross. Yeah, purple. Ugh. That's nice and oof, hard to look at, right? <laughs> but we know it works. So let's undo all that. All right. So we know that's working. And let's test out our text and player. And that seems to be working out just as well. And let's go to the last part here with the stats. We have Sabrina in the background. Let's just say we want to just totally rearrange all of these to make sure that they're working. Oops. All right. Gonna just undo all of that because it's all working. I need to set a name up here. So I'm gonna call this stat graphic. All right. Now that we have everything in the essential graphics panel and we have it named, I wanna actually make this a little bit easier for anybody on the receiving end of this Mogurt. And what we're gonna do is go down here on the bottom left hand side of this essential graphics and add formatting. We're gonna add a group. What this allows us to do is add some structure. You can imagine that the longer we make this, the harder it is to look at. So let's type in stats and go ahead and drag this up to the top right under the drop down menu. So now we just need to click and drag our stats into the stats drop down group. And I want to make sure that I do this in order so that I don't have to rearrange anything. So now we can twirl that up so it's nice and tidy. And we're going to add another group. Oop, we don't want to add a comment. And we'll go down here and add another group and call this one color. And just leave it here because. We're just gonna drop everything into it. By the time we get done, it's going to be, oop, make sure it gets in there. It's gonna be right under our stats. So now we have a nice looking essential graphic panel that we can open or close to make this a little bit simpler on anybody in Premiere. Now we're ready to export the Mogur and we're gonna go down here to export Motion graphic template. We need to save it. It's going to take a minute to collect any of the assets that need to be collected in order to export the Mogurt. And it's going to give me a pop up here that allows me to add keywords that I like putting in because it's something that you can search for within Premiere. So let's go ahead and type in a few. WNBA, stats graphics, stats graphic, and player. Click off, and those keywords will be included in the export. I'm gonna go up here and browse to a local drive. And now that I have that laid out, all I have to do is hit OK. And it's going to take a minute to export this and create the Mogur. And our time here in After Effects is all done. And in the next tutorial, I will show you how to import and use the Mogurt within Premiere.